Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this module entitled Emergency OBGYN Ultrasound Part 2 of Intrauterine Pregnancy, we're going to focus on the further assessment of normal pregnancy. We'll look at two further things that are important to assess in your pregnancies. First of all, learning how to date the gestational age of the pregnancy, as well as learning how to determine the fetal heart rate. And then we'll wrap up the module by examining further findings in abnormal pregnancies and learning how to differentiate these findings from a normal intrauterine pregnancy. The first concept that we'll focus on is dating fetal gestational age. Now in the first trimester, we're going to use an assessment of the crown rump length. Interestingly, dating in the first trimester is actually probably the most accurate during all phases of pregnancy as there's a difference in the growth curve as the fetus develops. In the second trimester, we'll measure the skull by parietal diameter, and the third trimester, the dating is composed of a biophysical profile focusing on the femur length as well as other biophysical measurements. This is an image of a first trimester pregnancy, and we're going to evaluate the gestational age by measuring the crown rump length. Here we see the fetal pole stretched across the gestational sac, and we see the crown located over towards the right and the rump towards the left. If we put the calipers down from crown across to the rump, we get a measurement of 1.46 centimeters. Now by selecting crown rump length in the software package on the ultrasound machine, we'll get an assessment of gestational age, which we can see here towards the bottom left, seven weeks and six days. As first trimester dating is considered one of the most accurate during the entire pregnancy, it's nice to print this image out and give to your patient to take for their follow-up visit with their OBGYN. In the second trimester, dating of gestational age focuses on skull circumference or measurement of the biparietal diameter. We want to measure the skull at about the level of the thalamus in an axial orientation with the face down. As we can see here, we're placing the calipers from the outer skull table proximally to the inner skull table distally, and we have a measurement of 3.26 centimeters correlating to a 16-week, one-day gestational age. In addition to measuring the gestational age of the fetus, another very important concept is to get a measurement of the fetal heart rate. Now, normal fetal heart rates will range from 120 to 160 beats per minute, but lower rates down to 90 beats per minute can be seen in early pregnancy in the early parts of the first trimester. M mode is the best method for determining fetal heart rate. Power Doppler, in contrast, gives more ultrasonic energy to the developing heart. Thus, M, M mode is the preferred way of measuring the fetal heart rate at this time. Here we're going to use M-Mode to determine the fetal heart rate. Notice we have the fetus zoomed up towards the top of the image and we're placing the M-Mode caliper directly over the fetal heart. Towards the bottom we see the M-Mode motion strip and notice the little, little waves showing the motion of the fetal heart. In this particular ultrasound machine, we need to measure between each peak, and we can see here that we get a heart rate determination towards the bottom, 158 beats per minute. This is something we can print out and place on the chart to show that at the time we saw the baby, there was an actual heartbeat. While fortunately most pregnancies have a successful outcome, unfortunately there are going to be some abnormal pregnancies that we'll see in the emergency department consistent with fetal demise. Some of the measurements we'll use to determine abnormal pregnancy with fetal demise is a very large gestational sac greater than 10 millimeters if no yolk sac is seen. Once the gestational sac is greater than 18 millimeters, we should see a fetal pole or else this is an abnormal pregnancy. And many times the gestational sac in an abnormal pregnancy will have an irregular shape with a scallop type appearance to it. Here's video from an abnormal pregnancy. The first thing we notice is a very large gestational sac without a yolk sac or discernible fetal pole with heartbeat. We also see the presence of subchorionic hemorrhage to the superior aspect of the gestational sac. That's that area of dark or anechoic fluid surrounding the gestational sac. And this is seen commonly with abnormal pregnancies or spontaneous miscarriage. Here we put the calipers down to measure the diameter of the gestational sac. Note that it's very large at 2.8 centimeters by 1.6 centimeters, much larger than the 1 centimeter mark that we said defined an abnormal pregnancy if there was no yolk sac or 18 millimeters if no fetal pole was seen. 
Other indicators of an abnormal pregnancy with fetal demise is a gestation greater than seven weeks, which is abnormal if no fetal heartbeat is seen. And if the fetal pole is greater than five millimeters in dimension, this is abnormal if no fetal heartbeat is seen. This was an unfortunate case in which we see a large fetal pole greater than five millimeters without a heartbeat. This is indicative of embryonic demise, and we also see a large circular amnion within the gestational sac. Now, while I do think it's important we're able to pick up the findings of an abnormal pregnancy, I'm always going to get a confirmatory ultrasound and or OBGYN consultation before giving the patient the news that there is a fetal demise. I'd like to conclude this module with another form of abnormal pregnancy, which is a molar pregnancy, which is a form of gestational trophoblastic disease. Now, gestational trophoblastic disease ranges from a spectrum from a benign hydatidiform mole to invasive choriocarcinoma, a form of metastatic disease. The majority of these are derived from paternal chromosomes. There's no maternal chromosomes in the embryo. The ultrasound appearance will be a cyst-like bunch of grapes with a snowstorm-type appearance, and classically, the serum beta-8 CG will be very elevated. Here's video from a patient who presented with a molar pregnancy. Her presenting symptoms were uncontrolled hypertension during the pregnancy, as well as vaginal bleeding and pain. And what we see here is the presence of a molar pregnancy within the fundal region of the uterus. Notice it has a cyst-like type appearance, very different from the normal appearance of an intrauterine pregnancy. As we scan back and forth, it almost looks like a bunch of grapes within the fundus of the uterus. So a diagnosis of a molar pregnancy, and my next move was to get an OBGYN consultation stat. So thanks for tuning in to part two of emergency OBGYN ultrasound, focusing on intrauterine pregnancy. Hopefully you now have a better understanding on how to further assess a normal pregnancy by determining gestational age and fetal heart rate. I hope also I've been able to give you some of the ultrasound findings that you may see in the abnormal pregnancy to know when you need to get an OBGYN consultation in the ED. So I hope to see you back as we move on to ectopic pregnancy in two modules in which we'll discuss the various findings of ectopic pregnancies that we may see in the emergency department. So I'll see you back as SoundBites continues.